we're going to continue looking at if-then operators, uh, the if-then statement, and some of the Boolean uh, or true-false uh, expressions we can put in it. Um, we looked uh, earlier at integers, and they're uh, fairly straightforward to work uh, with. Um, but with floating point numbers, we get into some issues, and that's because uh, decimal numbers, floating point numbers, uh, have a lot of precision, a lot of decimal places with them, and um, they may not always store the exact value we're wanting to. So we want to uh, look at some issues. So one of the big issues is to avoid uh, using the equal equal, the equality comparison with floats or uh, doubles, any sort of floating point numbers. And the reason is this precision issue. So um, we may want a number, we may expect a number to be 0 0.4, but it's actually 0 0.4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then some other numbers after that. Uh, so it's very close to 0 0.4, but it's a little bigger or it might be a little smaller than those. Um, so what we often do is, uh, instead of checking if a number is equal to another number, we'll check if it's very close to that. So if we want to do something like check if the number of meters some variable we've declared is equal to 0, 0.0 or some other number, um, this is not often going to work because a number of meters might not be exactly that. It would be very close, but not exactly like that. Uh, so instead, we're going to take the number of meters minus what we expect it to be. Uh, so that's what we write, number of meters minus 0 here. Um, and then we check if that's less than some small value. Uh, sometimes it's 0 0.001 or 0.0001 or something like that. So a little small value. It's like this is one tenth of one percent or one hundredth of one percent. So we're, if we're within that uh, amount, now in order to do this, we can't just subtract because sometimes this is negative and sometimes this is positive, and we want it always to be positive. So we're going to do a math that absolute value. So this is how this uh, how we replace. If we want to do something like this, check if some variable is equal to some value and their floating point numbers. What we really want to do is do if math that absolute value of the two variables subtracted from each other. If that's less than some small delta, some small epsilon, uh, or some small value here, uh, then we do our if-then stuff. Um, so that's what uh, we have to do with floating point numbers. Uh, but generally, we will try to simply avoid floating point numbers in this sort of comparison. So this just walks you through if you do have to do floating point comparisons and what you do. Now, one thing we do see sometimes with floating point numbers is that they're used for currency and sharing numbers, um, you know, dollar amounts, uh, $4.57. And we do want to have to do that comparison sometimes with numbers. I mean, with currencies, um, but we can often avoid it. Um, but in the and in this class, uh, we will let you just store numbers, uh, you know, currency amounts as just a floating point numbers. But just be aware that in the real world and in industry, there's almost always uh, a class, just like we created a die, a dice class, a die class, or um, there will be a class created for c storing currencies. And I often will store currencies as the number of cents. Uh, so rather than saying $4.54, it will be 454 cents. And then they'll have a method to print out the uh, value, return it as a decimal, uh, add it, and stuff like that. So just go through these exercises. These just t test out some things uh, using this sort of floating point operators and make sure you're aware of some issues there. OK? Um, now, and then the two challenge activities, um, make sure you do all these participation activities. Uh, and then these challenge activities are optional, but this is a nice simple one to check uh, for reading and, and again, enter a solution there. So feel free to work on that also.